Bose is a longtime sportscaster, originally from Guelph, Ontario, who has covered women's hockey and basketball for CBC and TSN. She's the author of a series of children's books that focus on all the positives of a healthy, active lifestyle. Lucy Tries Sports is a series of stories that features so much more, it includes positive messages of inclusion perseverance, social and emotional development for all children. Lisa Bowes, welcome to the main event. Well, thank you so much for having me, Jim. It's so great to meet with you and chat with you about my passion project. I love it. I love it. Well, your initial book, Lucy Tries Luge, was published in 2016. What was your inspiration for the character of Lucy to start with? And for the first story. Wow. Well, actually, this all began when I was getting ready to cover women's hockey for the Vancouver Olympic Games for CTV. And at the time, I had a young child who was two years old, my daughter, Rachel, and I was looking for books to read to her in the marketplace. And I couldn't really find anything that was about different types of sport. And I thought, wait a minute maybe we could create a collection of books that are about different types of sport and engage families and young readers about, about those. So that's why I actually began with something like the sport of luge. And I was in this Olympic mindset. So luge is definitely an Olympic winter sliding sport. There's the cover of Lucy tries luge. And really what we were doing here is we were making that connection between tobogganing or sledding on a snowy hill and, and to the sport of luge. And so my daughter, Rachel, I guess, kind of we were in that mindset as, as a mother and I was looking for those types of books. And that's really what led me to create this series and also me being a physical education graduate. So there was a whole bunch of things that were working uh, into play as I began the series. That's awesome. And, and what were your favorite sports growing up? Were you a luger at all? <laughs> I, I, I can say that I was a loser in my own mind, certainly as all of us who maybe have tried to toboggan or go sledding. If we are on our backs, then we are losing, aren't we? Now, I have actually tried skeleton. I do want to share that with you, Jim. And skeleton is the other sliding sport, which is typically one person on a sled, although there is doubles luge where there's two people lying on their backs. And in skeleton, you're on your tummy. So I have tried skeleton face first down an icy track. And then, of course, the other sliding sport is bobsleigh. But for me, when I was growing up in Guelph, Ontario, soccer was the big game. It's a, an Italian community, a very heavily influenced by the Italian culture. And everybody played soccer. And I actually played with the boys when I started. And then I actually played soccer all the way until my late 30s. But uh, now I've changed what I like to do. But yeah, soccer was something I just loved and tennis. And I actually loved all the sports, uh, Jim. I think that's why I went into physical education. You know, the thing that's interesting today is that so many people, when a child turns 12, 13, 14, they're trying to get them to specialize in just one sport. It's interesting to hear you say that you played everything. And I think that's kind of the, the secret of Lucy is that Lucy tries, she tries a lot of sports, right? Was that, was that something that you had in mind when you started writing these series? Uh, you know, it really is. Well, in the beginning, to be honest with you, in the beginning, I was thinking about different types of, of, of characters. So Curtis loves curling and Sammy tries speed skating and Lucy tries luge. And so uh, we, but then when I rec recognize that the word tries is so important, it is important for all of us. We're all trying so hard to get through so many things. 
Um, and, and so tries is really important, Jim. And every young child who is trying that sport, you know, we fall down, but we get up, don't we? It's hard sometimes. It's hard even just learning your numbers or learning how to read or to, or, or to write. And so we have to, with the help of our coaches, which could be our great teachers, well, that's what helps us to then try and be better through that effort and therefore to find that success. So Lucy, and I have flat Lucy with me here, uh, she really is that perseverance champion, Jim. That's how I see Lucy. She is a multi-sport champion because she tries so many different things, but with the help of her parents and her encouraging coaches, she too maybe has some challenges as she's trying these different types of sports. And she was overcoming a fear in the lose story, but she's able to just persevere. And that's really how I see Lucy. And that's really the importance of this series is to inspire our kids to be active, number one, and then to continue to persevere and to do so as they're learning to read. Well, that's exciting. And, you know, Lucy was conjured in your brain but then it took an illustrator, James Hearn, to kind of bring her to life. How did you meet James and what does he bring to the whole project? Oh, my gosh. Well, I met James. Uh, it took me three years to, to meet James. First of all, I just want to share. It took me seven years before the very first Lucy book was published and 14 rejections from publishing houses. But again, there's the lesson, right? We don't quit. We just keep moving, keep trying and doing your best. And if you believe in something, then you can make it happen. And so that's what happened for me. On my 15th try, <laughs> reaching a publishing house, they said yes. So, but for James, finding him took only three years. And I had said to him, and he comes from the greeting cards industry. so. He actually, this was his first opportunity to illustrate a children's book. And he has this beautiful touch, this beautiful uh, feel, I guess, if you will, as an illustrator. He really has that nice, soft um, touch that's perfect for, for, for children. And so him coming from greeting cards, I, I then said to him, James, I'm, I'm looking, thinking that this Luge story is my strongest. And I think it will be a girl, Lucy Luge. It's perfect alliteration. Can you make it a girl and make her sporty and athletic and appeal to all kids and give her red hair? And you did see her there. There she is again. And freckles. And, and, and he drew this incredible character when we came to our very first meeting. And I actually cried. I cried because what I'd seen in my mind's eye, in my imagination, James truly captured. And she really does appeal, Jim, to all kids. Boys love Lucy, too. And, and they relate to her because she's a kid just like them. And so, yes, yeah, sporty, athletic, freckles, red hair. And the reason I'd ask for red hair is because I grew up with Pippi Longstocking and watching the television show. And so that's what I was thinking about. So James and I are true teammates, Jim. Uh, he draws the pictures. I create the text. And there's a lot of purpose behind that text and the artwork. And together we create a picture book series. That now has five books in it. <laughs> I, I I love it. I love the fact that she's flat Lucy. And, you know, many people are maybe familiar with the flat Stanley character. And I'm just curious, where has flat Lucy been? Have you heard from other places around the world where she has traveled? Well, flat Lucy, she has been to actually many places. Do you know, I've had pictures sent to me from from Vietnam. Uh, I also had a, a luge athlete who had uh, taken her to uh, Pyeongchang to the Olympics before the last Olympics that we just saw in Beijing. Uh, she has been all over the world, truly. And she also, Jim, has been made into, into other formats. Here, I've just got this with me here at my home office. This was actually created for me from the Siksika First Nation. So an indigenous community right near where I live here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And this is all, I don't know if you can see it, but it's all beads. It's Gorgeous. this beautiful bead work. And this is a beaded medallion. And, and this is truly, truly special. I mean, I, I, it's very emotional for me, actually. Every time I, I, I get it out and I think about the work that went into this 
and how wonderful it was that they welcomed me to their community. And I've been very blessed to be able to do a number of um, activations with a number of Indigenous communities here in Western Canada. So yes, Lucy has been everywhere and she's been in many different formats as well. <laughs> but this is the most special, Jim. Oh my gosh, that is so touching to think, like you said, the hours that went into that and that, that's kind of the great legacy of Lucy, right? Lucy inspires whether you've ever been on a sled or whether you've ever tried a sport that, you know, you might have a hard time with. Look at that, what she inspired. You must be so proud of that. I'm just, yeah, it's very, it's a, it's a real treasure. It is a true treasure for me. And, and I will say too, that what is so great about Lucy is that all children can see themselves in a Lucy book. Yeah. So when we, you know, and that's really important, right? The books are also built around accepted principles of healthy child development. So what we know our kids need in order to stay in sports. So they need to play and participate and make a friend so important for girls. And in fact, in the short track story, so short track speed skating, this is where we introduce you to Lucy's first set of friends. So you see, that is important. And in this story, Lucy doesn't win the race, but she's happy for her friend who does win the race. And I think that is so important, sportsmanship, you know, being a gracious loser, being gracious in defeat, right? We can all learn from that lesson. And I think that's important. That's why I like the short track speed skating story. And the other two principles that we know our children need is they have to master a skill and in addition to playing, participating, making a friend, and they also need that incur, um, caring adult relationship. So that would be the coach. And we really bring that out in, in book four, or sorry, book three. This is Lucy Tries Soccer. Yeah, also available in Spanish and French. And the coach, in this case, this is Coach Nick. And he is also a very important part of this story about encouraging them to have fun while they play a game of three on three. You know what's strange is that this all started long before we had a pandemic, right? And when you think about how everybody for the last couple of years has had to be shuttered in and isolated, isn't it a great a tool, I guess, for teachers and for coaches to be able to talk to their children and their and their and their athletes? about the social and emotional development that they've kind of been lacking uh, because they couldn't go on a court or on a field in the last couple of years. It really has been amazing. Uh, like it's, it's actually heartbreaking too, though, how COVID has had such an effect in, in the learning outcomes and how teachers have had to adapt and overcome. We all have had to adapt and overcome. And I've been very fortunate to be able to share the loop Lucy message of to keep trying and to persevere through COVID times. Also, not just to learn a fundamental movement skill like dribbling a basketball, which is what we talk about in the basketball story, but just to be able to get through these hard times. And that goes for the adults too. And so to be able to reach that, reach so many uh, children and, and schools and teachers and educators through our virtual visits that actually has been a positive of COVID because I've been able to, to go anywhere in the world in an English speaking school. And, and from that, we then start to see, uh, you know, things like this, for example, Jim, where I, you know, I'll have teachers will, will, will then from the virtual visit, the children will then draw Lucy and then think about what could Lucy try next and what, and maybe it's something that they are doing. Maybe they are just trying to, maybe they're trying to bake. Well, they could write a little, write a story, or write a little, a little um, drawing. And and here, for example, is Lucy fed de bicyclette. So this is actually French from a French school. Here's Lucy trying cricket, you know. And so I get this wonderful, wonderful drawings and outcomes from Lucy tries pickleball, if you can believe that. And <laughs> and so when we see things like this, and here's another, you know, a wonderful thing where the children are are really you know, engaging with Lucy and this message and then thinking about what they are doing and then they are able to work on their art literacy. I just love this. I love seeing Lucy playing sports. And, and so I can't tell you enough what that means when we have that kind of, of feedback. And that is happening amidst a COVID, you know, COVID in a pandemic. Uh, 
I just know that, you know, the series does make a difference. Lucy really connects to the kids and it's really wonderful to see when they share like that. Lisa, when you first sat down and think about 14 rejections and all of the perseverance that you had, could you ever imagine that the whole idea and the notion of Lucy could evolve into French speaking books and Spanish speaking books and pickleball and sports that you've never dreamt of playing. It, it's so true, Jim. I, I, I never would have predicted this. I really, I started it by just as an education piece for young families to learn about different types of sport. And then as you can see, we have brought in the mainstream sports. That's really what it all began. But then for it to evolve to this point, I have actually had children create their very own Lucy style books. And then we've had teachers and I have then worked on, hey, wait a minute, why don't we actually, instead of having Lucy try it, why don't you put yourself as the main character? And then we have children writing about themselves and, and what they are trying. And so they're doing a Lucy style book, but creating a story about themselves and the power of that, the power of that, of that thought to, you know, pen to paper, pencil to paper, and to be experiencing what you are in real life and putting it into a creative way on a book and then reading about what you are doing. I mean, those connections, it's incredible, authentic learning that is happening coming out of a children's book series. And, and I have, I mean, gosh, Jim, I've even had the beautiful little grade one class from a lower socioeconomic area here in the city that I live in. And they wrote, Lucy tries camping. And, and then they read it to me and I cried. I mean, it was just incredible. Well, it's, it's an extraordinary moment to see your idea being evolved by little minds into other things. But you also talk about the development of literacy skills with all of this, right? So now a child that never in their wildest dreams would ever think of writing a book or drawing. Now, for the first time, you're inspiring them to do that. But I think part of the other you know, great advantage of this series is that it's not at all about sports, right? You're talking about developing good life skills, you know, how to work with people like you talked about before, how to win, how to lose. How 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 is that feedback come into you from people that are using it for that purpose? Oh, it's it's amazing. I had a teacher just recently, Jim, share with me how she was using the books uh, to do exactly that, to not only to reinforce physical literacy skills, she had her students uh, trying to skate on pieces of carpet in the school gym, but she's then also using that to reinforce that messaging around how wonderful it is to be happy for the other person who has won the race or the other team that has won the race. So we are really seeing it as a resource tool. It's a children's book series, but it is so much more than that. It is that educational resource tool to reinforce healthy child development and, and also just through and through reading, they are then picking up their literacy skills. And, and I think it's just an amazing thing of how this has evolved. And really the, the bottom line, Jim, is because we have this relatable character that all children really do understand. And I had one principal that actually shared with me that Lucy actually united her school because her entire school was writing their very own Lucy books. Wow. And so for that, for someone to say to me that a character that was in my head that James then drew, that we then created these books and we just keep evolving. Each book keeps, I think, getting better and better. Uh, for her to say that helped unite her school uh, and that children learn the value of perseverance and trying from this exercise they were doing, but obviously first with the books. Well, that really, that really means a lot. It's really, um, it, it's really a special thing. <laughs> well, I have to ask you this because you've had five successful stories that have gone out on different sports. What's next? What's Lucy doing next? <laughs> oh, well, I I'm so glad you asked. I'd be happy to share with you because guess what, my friends? It does take a very long time to create a picture book. Sometimes it can take us up to two years 
two years for us from when I first come up with the idea and I start writing. In fact, hold on one sec here. I always actually start, Jim, with the words. So here's an example of all the words that I would uh, use in a story. And that's how I start my process, is writing down all the words. And then from here to me writing it, James illustrating it, the layout, the this, the that, all that, it can take up to two years. So we are now halfway through book six. Here it comes, drum roll, please. <laughs> drum roll. There it is. Lucy tries baseball. Oh, I love baseball. Lucy tries baseball, indeed. And so again, we are starting with something very simple. See, here is a line drawing. This is what it looks like before it becomes oh. colored. It's a weekend at home. Let's be active today. Playing catch is a game our whole family can play. So That's again, it. very awesome. simple illustration wanting to reinforce being active with your family, being outside, just playing a fundamental skill like catch. Because once you have that fundamental skill, then you can try baseball. Try baseball. That's wonderful. Well, you know, you're such an inspirational person. It's easy to see why Lucy is so inspiring because she comes from your brain. So that's, that's, a, great, that's, that's a great tribute to you and, and to James's artwork. You're certainly an inspiration to us. I can't thank you enough for bringing us Lucy. I mean, let's face it. If you weren't around, we wouldn't have Lucy in our lives. And now we do. And we can't wait for the next iteration of Lucy trying baseball and for all the other things that you're going to do uh, along the line to help young people understand the value of sports and the value of friendship. And we thank you so much for your friendship today. Well, thank you so much, Jim. And I really love chatting with you about Lucy. And, and I just want to say too, that for, for those of you who are in hospital, I know how hard you are trying to get better and to recover. And you've got all that wonderful support at the hospital, your doctors, your nurses, the support staff, your caregivers, your parents, and, and me too, me and Lucy. We are thinking you and we are giving you a big hug, a big virtual hug from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Okay, um, we know you can do it. Just keep trying, keep persevering, my friends. And thank you, Jim. Big hug for you too. <laughs>